questions to ask throughout a campaign with the confidence rising. I told JC Nate and Rich that good times are coming, no need for deep diving. Sang Cam's reactions, watch along to the pride of London thriving. The Eagles of South stay flying. Keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. Yo, 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 big up everyone. Hope you're doing well. Obviously, a little bit later than planned, but we still bring out the content. Um, this is episode three, the review of Football Dreams. Nate, how are you doing, my friend? Yeah, man. I mean, obviously, we, we were planning on doing this as we usually do record it on a Thursday night, but this Thursday didn't quite match the scheduling. So myself and Rich had to kind of make last minute alterations. But apart from that, mate, I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, you're doing good, doing good. And, um, Honestly, this this episode was like, yo, because it just, it, it kind of brings to light the whole aspect of, because I know from episode one, we were speaking about parents and and how they do what they want, everything they can for their child. We looked at, obviously, um, Bola and um, the fact that his mum went out and spent 160, 170 pounds on a pair of boots because she wanted the best for him. And then we just meet Romy. Yeah, year old Romy. Mm. Um, now a bit of backdrop his dad uh was in the academy setup previously, he got released and he didn't, he's now become a coach. And he, he, he didn't specify which academy he was in, did he? Nah, yeah, he didn't mention. And um, you know, credit to him, like he he puts in the work, he puts in the work for Romy, like he really does. You see them out doing one, one v one sessions one-to-one -one sessions and stuff, um, time, whatever it may be and stuff. Um, but then it kind of brings up the question, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Because then you think about it, he's eight. He already trains three times a week and he's doing additional sessions and such. What's, what's your thoughts on it? I mean, this episode for me really highlighted how having parents involved at the academy level, it's great because... Naturally, young boys want to do well if their mum's there or if their dad's there or if both mum and dad are there. But at the same time, it can also be a detriment because as we've seen with um, with Romy's dad, despite him wanting the best for Romy, he was getting too caught up in trying to coach from the sidelines when there's coaches that are paid by the football club to tell Romy, listen, you need to just, you know, the coaches are there for a reason. Now, obviously, he's going to have his feedback and he's going to be giving his opinion to his son about you're not doing this that well or this that the other but i think that he cares for his son he wants his son to succeed where he where he didn't so it's understandable that he probably wants it probably a bit more than romy does romy's only eight years of age so his his mindset now is just i want to be a footballer but he's not specified how far ahead he wants to go you know, we saw in the first episode of the under 12s were looking at I want to be like Mbappe and Messi and all of this. They had a clear plan that they wanted to make it to the top level or bare minimum make it to senior first team football and don't take it from there. Romy's only eight years old, remember? So he's he's still got so much developing to do that I don't blame his father for acting the way he did. And I won't lie, the broadcast, the documentary kind of done him dirty because you understand why he's doing what he's doing. But it does, in a way, make me look at him and say, I understand what he's doing. I know what he's trying to do. But it paints him in a negative light, like he's putting too much pressure on an eight-year-old's shoulders. And don't get me wrong, there is an element of truth to that. But at the same time, he's his father. He loves his son. He wants his son to succeed. And unfortunately, you have to push young kids at that age because young kids get distracted by what, what's, with, what's going on with their friends, what's going on at school, what's going on at home. If you want to make it as a professional footballer, you have to, or a professional athlete even, it has to be tunnel vision. There can be no, as you get older, girlfriends and all this sort of thing. You have to literally zone in on what you want. And that's why so many people never make it. I remember playing football at young level, never had the focus and drive to make it to the top. So I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I was, you know, I was a decent player when I was younger, but I never had the drive to do that. Whereas now, Romy's dad's trying to give him that. But at eight years old, it's not an essential requirement. He needs it at, say, 13s. 13s is when you really start to see things change on the on the landscape. Because when you're playing under eights, under nines, under tens, it's all having fun. The results matter, but it's not like it's life and death. But at 13s, that's when 
academies realize, okay, we might have a future with this guy. Or, yeah, I don't know if this boy can go far with us. So, obviously, it's hard to say, really, because, you, you know, you understand why he's doing this. But there's that part of you that says, mate, push back. Let the coaches handle Romeo. Let them pull Romeo aside and, and give him the pointers that he's not catching up on. You don't need to coach him while you're there. Just give him support and say, Romeo, listen to your coaches. Just be careful and just make sure that you're switched on when they need you to be switched on. You know, that, that would be my take from it. I, I'm, I'm not mean to, to keep digressing here. No, no, you have some excellent points there because, you know, as much as the documentary kind of painted him in a bad light, and I agree, to be fair, because it was it seemed as if, like, oh, my gosh, this is a negative parent. Because obviously when, when we eventually come to speak about, um, I believe it was Jesse, his dad also got released as well, you know, and they showed him in a completely different light. But I guess at the same time, it was like, you know what, for parents who are watching this documentary, they can start thinking, oh, wait, am I like that? You mm. know, um, and it's obviously, like you said, Wes wants the best for his boy. So no one, we're not going to begrudge him that at all. You know, and I think the only no. time where it came a bit like, mm, was when he was coaching from the sides in the game, you know. Yeah. But then you're literally now taking away the job from the coaches who are there and stuff. But other than that, um, like, obviously, he was very authoritarian. I think in one of the one-to-one sessions he had in that, he was like, listen, if you want, I'll go, I'll go, I'll coach someone else and stuff, you know. So, obviously, it is putting a lot of pressure on Romy. Bless him, he's only eight years old. But like mm. you said, he wants the best for his son. Um, and it was interesting, actually, because I believe it was one of the practice matches. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Romy really struggled to, to manage his emotions. But then there was something else that the, the Palace coaches picked up on is they said that whenever his dad is there, whenever Wes is there, Romy's more focused. Mm. You know, and I feel like for Romy, he's like, I don't want to let my dad down. You know, and that's so mm. much weight to take as an eight-year-old kid. Like, I don't want to let him down. And even to the point where if he maybe misplaced a pass and stuff, he don't look at his yeah. coaches. He looked at his dad. <laughs> You know, it's kind of like also looking for that. And even if he did something good, it's like looking for reassurance. Like, oh, I hope I've done this well. I hope this done this well. You know, once again, yeah. is it a case where he then goes home and he gets an absolute telling off? Or is it a case where it's like, I want to please my dad? It's it's such a fine line. Yeah, it's a funny a one because line. you can clearly see that when Romy is switched on, he's looking to make as big an impact on the game as he possibly can. Now, obviously, we saw they said, he, you know, he, he struggles with his emotions. When things don't go his way, he kind of flings his arm up a bit and gets a bit emotional. We've seen, Look, we've got a first-team player who's famous for doing that kind of thing in Wilfred Zaha. So it's not, you know, it's a natural human reaction. When things don't go your way, you get frustrated, you lose control of yourself, and you kind of can't help but get, ah, like, oh, stuff this, I can't be bothered, you know. I remember doing it when I was his age. Anytime I misplaced the pass or... You know, I'd, I'd missed a shot or I wasn't necessarily in the right position and I, I, my man's just beating me. I was like, oh, flipping hell. As opposed to, okay, switch on. Right, get back into position, move the ball, move the ball, find a pass, all that sort of thing. But it's hard to think like that when you've just lost focus on it. So knowing that the coaches are picking that up, but they're willing to admit when Wes is there, Romy is on point because he knows his dad's there. He wants to show to his dad, I'm doing this right. But when he's not there, Romy's probably terrified that because his dad's not there, the coaches go back to his dad and say, listen, Wes, Romy had a bit of a stinker. You know, he was misplacing passes. He wasn't getting his shots away. He wasn't trying to find his man. All that sort of thing. He probably fears that Wes is going to not so much lift him out of it, but kind of really give him a dressing down and say, Romy, you got to be switched on. you got a red tear tear. It's like, No. But as I said, there's so much pressure on young kids at that age, especially because if you're at a club, if you're at a football league academy, the pressure at football league level wouldn't be as intense at, at Premier League level because the the money in the football league is not as high as the Premier League. For example, if you come through the ranks of let's say AFC Wimbledon, for example, right, they're in League Two this season. So if you got a, 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 if your son is just about to break into the first team, makes his debut this season, he's going to be on five hundred pound a week, mm -hmm. maybe seven hundred and fifty. That that kind of bracket. You um, sorry, one second. 
Oh, blood. Oh, blooming heck. There we go. There we go. It's turned on to vibrate now, so that should shut it up. Sorry, people. Um, no, but what I'm saying is, is that, you know, the, the pressure at Premier League academies, of which we have one, because it's a Premier League football club, parents rightfully want to see their son play in the Premier League, be it at Palace, be it at Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham, West Ham, Brentford, Fulham. The pressure to play in the Premier League as a London football club is imperative because, bear in mind, there's now, I think, seven or eight Premier League clubs in, in the capital now because Fulham and Brentford have joined. The, yeah, there's eight of us now. So you look at that and go, holy hell. you know. <laughs> and look, I understand. Look, I felt for Romy in, in spades because you can clearly see when his dad's there, he wants to do everything he can to get his dad's approval. But that's natural for boys. We always look up to our dads if our dads are in our lives. Obviously, not all boys have that privilege. For example, I, I absolutely idolised my dad when I was a kid. I wanted to be just like him. And I'm sure yeah. you were the same, Rich. Do you know what I mean? It's it's hard because that's your main male role model. Yeah. So when they're teaching you things and putting you wide and sometimes dressing you down, you learn from that and you realise, okay, do you know what? Maybe I didn't do as well as I think I thought I did. So you feel for Romeo because he's a sweet kid. You know, yeah. there's a lot of talent there, but at the under eight age, and remember I said this at under 12s, the parents want it so much. They kind of lose sight that you can't, you can't demand them to be Neymar, Mbappe, Ronaldo, Wilfred Zaha, Tyrick Mitchell, Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Just let them be Bola. Let them be Romy. Let them be, you know, Jesse and all these other years. Just yeah. let them be themselves. They're going to make mistakes. There's going to be bumps on the road. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be times where you're thinking, oh, no, are they going to make it? Are they not? Do they stay? Do they go? But, Rich, it's hard because, look, we're invested in this because it's our football club and we want to yeah. see the young lads coming through our football club do well. You know, episode one kind of broke my heart with Bowler because I thought that boy deserves a fighting chance, but he has to make he has yeah. to make the most of it. You know, and hopefully he did get retained alongside his friends. Obviously, we don't know if, if that was the case or not. But point is, is that you feel for the parents because, you know, the single parents, they sacrifice so much money. As we said, Bowler's mum paid like 160 quid for, for football boots, which yeah. is baffling to you and me because it's a whole lot of money. But <laughs> those are the sacrifices you have to make it yeah. with this, you know. And granted, not all parents can afford the flashiest boots and, you know, have the boots that the, the, big, the big players are wearing. But... Every, especially now in inflation, everything's going astronomically through the roof. But I think the documentary wasn't intentionally trying to paint Wes as that kind of soccer dad, soccer mom stereotype. Yeah. But because he wants the best for Romy, he can't help himself. And then he realized when he they had that chat, he went, you know what? Maybe I do need to take a step back. And when the game's over, put Romy wide and go, Romy, I liked what you did here. You can improve here. And this yeah. is an area that we need to work on alongside the coaches instead of you know if you don't want it enough i'll go train someone else that 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 had a negative mindset to romy romy was like my dad doesn't want to train me no more yeah. so his confidence just plummeted to the floor so but look, it, 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 it was, was lovely key, to, uh, it was lovely to see yeah, romy's so story come come to full circle because you were thinking please please tell me he makes it you know all the work he's put in he, he puts in a lot of work and um, it was very good to see the coaches have that meeting with dad, you know, and even with them in the meeting, dad was like, oh, but he misplaced the past and like, he didn't say anything. It was like, can, can you just allow us to do our job, please? <laughs> you know, but obviously the coaches are not going to pick the bones out of absolutely everything, you know, and, no, that, um, it was just so nice that. at the end. Yeah, yeah so not nice at the end. Level, under nines level, yeah, they're exactly. looking at him going, do you know what? Okay, he's fairly bad at ball retention. He's not particularly great at finding his man, but we can work with him on that. Yeah. If it's, as I said, if it's 15s and up, they're thinking, listen, Romy, this is 15s now. This is close yeah. to scholarships. We need to see you keep the ball as much you as possible. Yeah, you heard Phil say, because we're transitioning to a more expansive style of football at both at academy level and first team level, a lot of the kids that were playing under the old auspices, they're not used to it. So there's a strong possibility of a massive colour across the nines, tens and up. You're yeah. thinking, boy, that's ruthless. But that's what that's what academy football is. And this is, is the it. misconception I think a lot of our fan base had. We all thought, oh, you know, we love all our youngsters at our academy. We do. But some of them just aren't good enough. And some of them yeah. just don't make it to how we we're trying to move to. So, like, as I said with Bowler, I wanted the kid to succeed 100%. But... 
because he was hiding injuries, you know, to briefly touch on episode one, you're thinking, mm, but coaches don't like that. No. If, if, if he's truthful with them and says, listen, I've picked up a bit of a knock on my knee, can I just get it seen to and, uh, and give me a program to work on? They go, you know what, Bola, brilliant. We can get you in and we'll get, they get that worked away. Yeah, yeah. When you hide it, they're like, well, that's the first we've heard of it. It's like a, yeah. like a student not doing a homework, Rich. You're like, what? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, that's the first I've heard of it because you expect them to do the homework. Same yeah. now with the academy coaches. They want the young boys to go away on their programs and, and be ready to come back from injury and say, listen, Bola, how's the knee feeling? Do you feel strong enough to get in the sessions or do you need more one-on-one -on -one time? So, you know, it's... It, it's a dog eat dog world, as, as Will said, and you heard what Ebbs had to say in this episode as well, because Abere um, popped up in this one as well. So you're yeah. thinking, it's so good to hear the contrasting aspects because Zaha pretty much transitioned straight mm -hmm. up the ranks into the first team, whereas yeah. Abere Eze was released and released and released and released mm -hmm. and released yeah. and ended up stacking shelves at Tesco at one point. And people forget this, you know. It's not mm -hmm. it's not a case of, oh, you're a footballer from age seven and you, pro you go straight through. A lot of kids That's don't. Right. <laughs> You know, it's a proper graft. And just to finish up on 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 Romy, it was nice to see his dad wears. Like, he admitted where, like, okay, you know, maybe I need to take a step back. And you saw, you got, you got to see more of the father the nurturing side to him. I think that was what, what was lacking. You mm. know, yes, he loves Romy. He loves him. What's the best for him? But there just needed to be more of a nurturing side to him and stuff, which you saw towards the end of um, his segment, which was amazing to see. And um, just a heads up, everyone at the under nine level, under nine, they retained their place anyway, which was excellent to see. So it'd be great to see how how that developed. Um, speaking of fathers, let, let's do let's do Jesse. Let's do Jesse next because Harry's one was so intriguing because there's something you said just now um, regarding the style of play, which links directly with Harry. But let's go into Jesse. Um, Boy, he's technically gifted. <laughs> he's so techy. <laughs> he's, he's so techy. But once again, just like I believe it was Caden in episode one, height was the question. Mm. You know, it, it's crazy, you know, because obviously, bless him, he's out there, he's 13 years old. It, it, it's kind of like, and sorry to send shots at our boy, but it was kind of a, a JC Tristan sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> big up to JC and Tristan, by the way. This ain't no no shots, no shots, but um, probably around the same age. But the size differential is mad, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. one thing about Jesse is he's not scared, no, he, he, he puts himself about, you know, yeah, he's fearless. Um, so technically gifted, he works hard. He's always wanting to hone his skills. And this kind of also brings his dad, because his dad got released from Palace as well. Mm. His dad got released from Palace. And the one thing his dad said at the jump, he said, I got released from Palace because I don't think I worked hard enough. Mm. So he's kind of bringing that element to, to Jesse, but not in an authoritarian style. It's just like, come on, Jesse. You see his nurturing side, you know? So it was nice to see, like, the the contrast in, in parental styles and stuff, mm. you know? Um and um, honestly, this this kid, you can tell he wants it bad. I'm not saying that other kids don't, mm. but he wants it bad. He goes home, he's doing extra bits. But at the same time, he doesn't overdo it. That's what I got from him. He doesn't overdo it. He knows when it's the right time um, to do a bit and so when he might need to relax. However, it was so interesting to hear from his mum saying that he doesn't want to do sleepovers and stuff. He doesn't like playing out because it takes him away from playing. That in itself is like, yo, you need to remember, be a kid. <laughs> yeah. Be a kid. Have those sleepovers. Have those times up with your friends. Don't just have it all about football. You know, I mm. guess it's important, but... And once again, the, the kid, the, the coaches, fair play to the coaches for identifying this and pulling them up in the meeting and just saying, listen... Please remember to have a social life. Mm. You know, it was great to see. But what was your thoughts on, on Jesse overall? I mean, naturally, because Jesse's dad was released by the football club and he didn't show any bitterness about it. He 
openly said, you know, I wasn't as committed, I wasn't as hungry, I wasn't as driven. Hearing that, it was a very stark reminder to Jesse that you have to want it so much, in fact, that you're willing to do whatever it takes, even if it means cutting off a social life, which, of course, can work in a positive, as it has done with Wilfred Zaha, because he said he had to start, he had to stop, but he, he couldn't go to any parties that his mm. friends are going to get in calls of his mates. Oh, Wilf, we're going to this party up in Addiscombe or we're going up to this party in Addington or whatever. Wilf was like, no, nah, I can't go. I've got football. But at the same time now, the, the, the rewards have, reaped, have been reaped for Wilfred Zaha because he got a big move to Manchester United. OK, it didn't go to plan, but he knew he had to sacrifice those parties yeah. to the point where once, once he does retire at whatever age he chooses to retire at, he can then enjoy the rest of his life knowing that I may have missed out on all the craziness and all the fun of being a young teenager in London and whatever, but his sacrifice paid off because he got to have a career that not many people can get to. Bear in mind, being a footballer, it's a very narrow window of a career. It's maximum 10 to 12 years as an outfield player. Goalkeeper's a little bit longer. Mm. Yeah. But with Jesse, what really warmed me to this kid was that he wasn't arrogant in the sense that I'm going to be a footballer and I don't, he was saying, if I'm not, if I'm not good enough, I'm gone. So I have to prove to myself every single day that I want it just as much as the other boys in my, in my group, if not yeah. more. And even when he was having lads that were exponentially taller than him, like these, these, these kids were beasts compared to Jesse. You know, you're talking Gandalf versus Bilbo Baggins. The, the height difference was mad. Jesse had no fear. He was going into tackles. He was making him, himself a presence on the pitch. And the coaches were noticing this. And there's always conversations with coaches where they're saying, Do you know what? There's something there. He's not the tallest. He's not the strongest. He's not the broadest. But there is a player there that we might be yeah. able to craft into something. Because remember, Lionel Messi is very, very short. But he's one of, if not one of the best to ever play the game. Yeah. So height... People misconstrue that height means you're a good player. Not necessarily. Peter Crouch was an absolute beanpole, but he was a very clumsy striker. Yeah. Good footballer, but not, not like that top-tier, world-class striker. Just decent. Yeah. You look at Messi. People would look at Messi and go, he's too short. He'll get battered around a football pitch. But he made a lot of big, big hairy men very, look very silly in games. Absolutely. You're setting them for one Mars bar, two Mars bars, three, <laughs> four Mars bars, five Donner kebabs. They were just going everywhere but where Messi was. Um, I just loved that, that Jesse's segment was very, very real. You know, his mum was very honest with things. His yeah. dad was very honest with things. Jesse was by no means getting ahead of himself. He was saying, no, listen, if I'm not good enough, I'm in trouble. And if I don't look on a football, I don't know what I'm going to do. So there is that element to it where Jesse wasn't switched out and thinking, oh, I've got this in the bag. I'll be playing for Palace when I reach the 23s and all this. And he, No, he's thinking, mm, I could be in trouble if I don't turn my game on. So, um, yeah, look, everything that Jesse went through, you, you were just relieved that he got it and he smashed it because seeing a, a player like that who's dedicated to what he's doing, that's the, that's the concentration you want to see at academy level. Admittedly, yeah. you don't want them to... It overindulge in that focus. You do want them to become young men that have a bit of a social life. They, you know, get a girlfriend, but just remember that you have to put time in on your social life and you have to take things mm -hmm. outside of football because otherwise football becomes so big an exception. You end up like Lewis Hamilton in Formula One. That's all he ever talks about is, is Formula One. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you, it's unhealthy to consume yourself with what you're, you're passionate about. You know, you need to take a break from it. Like we took a break from doing shows during the summer. We were like, you know what? Nah, lock off. Yeah. <laughs> give, us ourselves, give ourselves a few weeks off and then we'll come back and we'll start doing more shows. But um, no, look, Jesse's a great kid. Like, you know, I think I think he's a great, yeah, he is. great advertisement for wants it, willing to work for it and not getting ahead of himself. Yeah. But to see I mean, his dad get the real side of the release section, he was like, listen, I didn't want it enough and I paid the price for it. He was like, you know what? That's what you want to see. You 100%. don't want to see kids thinking that I'm on easy street. I'm going to make it. You've got to think, no, do you know what? This kid's outplaying me. He's got more assists than me, more goals than me. He's passing the ball more than me. Things that you need to see, right? Do you know what? The coaches know I'm not playing at the best level I can. So I need to start making that effort now. And Jesse did that and he smashed it. He did, he did. And um, just on that aspect of not getting ahead of himself, like the, the game against Stevenage, you know, he started off, like a house on fire, you know, mm. really, really played well. And then 
we went a goal down and his head dropped. He started making decision, um, decision making weren't good. Uh, temperament was going as well. So, but it was good that it happened because he allowed him to understand that, listen, there's going to be bumps on the road and that's life. You know, it's how we deal with those bumps on the road as, as we're moving forward and stuff. So, um, mm. Congratulations to Jesse. You did get that two year extension as well. So, um, yeah, big up to Jesse and, and his mum and dad. It's great to see how much they sacrificed for him. So, big up. 100%. Now, the last one. Bit, honestly, this this kid, this story, this segment had like, I was literally at this gripping the, the, the seat. Yeah. yeah, was, yeah. You, you made the point earlier, like I said, in a Roy Hodgson system, Harry, age 10, is perfect. We've changed the way we've played football. So this is why this part was so intriguing to me. Now, obviously, Harry, he used to be a centre-back. <laughs> mm. he, he's now a striker, you know, and um, mm. he was on the brink of being released. On the brink of being released. And he had his first initial meeting, and they, I think it was in the back of the game. Um Millwall, I think we played Millwall. Yes, and his head was all over the place, especially first off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, his, his touches were off. Yeah, he couldn't quite get himself in the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, getting head him. loss, pushing players. I'm not gonna lie. I yeah. like, Harry, he, come on, mate, come on. First off. You know, I mean, looking back at it, I think he could have got a penalty. To be fair to him, but you know, it is what it is. Um. And the coaches, you know, they let him know. It was just like, Harry, you're losing your head, you know. But I think at the same time as well, just watching it, I feel Harry felt targeted, mm. you know, with that feedback as well. I mean, I think, I think maybe they should have pulled him to the side. I know obviously coaches wanted that. Like, they might say something to one person, but mean it for everybody. Mm. Um, but maybe that was a kind of a pull, pull to the side sort of thing. Second half, he improved. He improved against more. He had a much better second half. But... The one thing that came out of that is like he didn't score, he didn't impose himself enough on the game. Um, mm. because obviously the style of play has changed. He can't just go around using because obviously he's quite a stocky lad, he can't go around just using his weight and stuff. And he actually has to be technically decent on the ball, which he mm. isn't yet. Mm. You know, so it was it was just so intriguing. And then he was given that he said, All right, cool, we're gonna give you a six months extension. So at least he's got a chance. And dad and himself knew. We've been given up because he was worried. He was like, I don't think I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. You know, and to be able to get that um extension, that that was good. And that's when the work started for him. I feel that's that was the moment it was like, this is my chance. Mm. I have to take it. And you just saw his development, you know, as the episode went on. What was your thoughts on Harry? I mean, as you say, you know. And I did mention this earlier, very earlier on. I think we were talking about um, Romy and stuff like that. But because this documentary was filmed last season, which was the first season under Patrick Vieira, there was a lot of interest on right how what how are Palace going to play under Vieira? What's the what's the blueprint that they're going to transition from Roy Hodgson, Sam Allardyce, Alan Pardew, defensive? you know, 10 men behind the ball football to trying to play a bit more of an expansive brand of football. To know that this was going club-wide, so it was going from under eights to the to the senior team, you're thinking, okay. But knowing that Harry got caught out where under a defensive system, he's perfect. He's got the build for it. He's got the, he's got the profile for it. But an expansive brand of football where you're expected to have more of the ball He's in that cap twenty two area of he can he can definitely develop to that, but right now straight away starting from the ground up on a new philosophy of football he is the proverbial deer in the headlights. But what I would say to that is his tenacity and his work rate when things weren't going his way. Yes, he lost his head, but that's human. As I said mm -hmm. earlier, you know, but Rich, you and I would play played football as, as kids, right? And we're I remember famously. A couple of times I got skinned by my 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 my, my uh, the player playing in front of me. I got skinned time and time and time again. 
and my head would drop. I'd lose my head. I'd go absolutely. I probably would make some reckless tackles where I'm lucky not to get a red card. But I remembered a coach pulled me aside and said, listen, what you need to do is stay in the game. Yes, he's going to skin you, but just read his movement. And from there, I started to pick up, okay, this is where I tackle. This is where I drop back. This is where I push up 10 yards and try and close down his momentum. Little things like that take a while for, for the for, 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 you, for the sink in at a, at a young level. With Harry, what made what really made me smile was when he realized he was on the cusp of being released, not only did he make a massive change to how we played, but he was nowhere near enough as emotional. He was constantly looking to make himself have an impact on games. And then, yeah. as you saw towards the end, just, just about as he knows he's on the cusp of being released, he gets that all-important game-winning goal against Arsenal. And it's a beautiful finish. <laughs> oh, it's a cracking finish, but bless him. He's so humble because he doesn't want to get ahead of himself and think yeah. he's done it. His dad says, it wasn't just a winning goal, it was the game-winning goal. And that makes his head kind of pick up a bit because naturally, because he's because he knows he's had, a, he's had a stinker of it. He hasn't quite been where the coaches want him to be. He's terrified of yeah. being like, oh, so the work ethic from him and his dad pulling him aside and co comforting him on one side and saying, listen, Harry, this is where the real work starts. Mm. On the other side, he's saying, listen, we're going to work on this together. It's not a case of you've got to do this. You've got to do this. It's a case of I'm going to do it with you, son. That's what you want to see from parents. Yes, yeah. your parents will want their, their sons to do well. Of course, of course. And especially if you're a fan of the club your son's in the academy of. You want them to get to the first team because it makes you even prouder if they score a screen into the top corner of the homes there. You're like, yo, that's my son. You can go absolutely crazy because you you know your son's made it. But to see Harry put that kind of work ethic in, knowing full well he was on the cusp of being released, you got to love just how switched on he became. And he wasn't remotely thinking oh, I'm doing just about good enough. He was like, no, I need to do better than this. I yeah. have to do better than this, and I will do better than this. And he and he, he stayed true to his word, and that's not easy. A lot of kids will lose focus because they think they're doing just about enough. But to coaches, they're thinking, you're doing fine, but we need better. Yeah, Better to coaches isn't 20 goals, 20 assists. It's just right. Because Harry had a particular problem of, of not keeping the ball when he was trying to get space to have a shot. He was trying to take the shot first time. Yeah. And as you know, Rich, when you're playing centre forward, you can you might get a shot away with your first touch, but it's got to be one hell of an angle to get the shot away at. You know, Absolutely. you might need to take a second touch to switch it onto your more dominant foot and then hit the ball. Yeah. Or you might get lucky and hit it with your weaker foot. I'm right footed, so if I'm shooting on my left foot, it's probably going to hit someone in, in the stand. <laughs> it, might, it might hit the crossbar, it might go in, it could go wide. Yeah, but you feel more confident on your more dominant sure. foot, you know, on your stronger foot. So, but to see, to see Harry kind of shake a little bit nervously when they were doing that, when the, when they were trying to tell him about was he going to stay, was he going to go, to see the relief wash over him, and he was honest with them. He said, "I wasn't good enough. I wasn't doing yeah. enough." That's how you know, right? These kids are more than just expecting to get contracts. They know you know what, I'm not I'm not in that number. I'm not in that bracket. Mm. But I want to be in that bracket. So I have to work my tail off to get in that bracket because the bracket gets narrower and narrower as the age groups go up. So, yeah. you know, but bless him. He tried so hard. You just he think, did, oh, don't, don't do this to me, please. I don't want to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big hairy. I'm a big, I'm a big man. I don't want to be crying. I'm a young boy that wants it so much. But, you know, when, when you see kids fight for it, you know, and they're willing to accept their own faults. You're like, do you know what? That's how you know they can make it. And I never, because I probably wouldn't have taken that criticism on board. I'd have been like, no, what are you talking about? I'm doing brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, mate, you're, you're literally a hundred miles away from where you should be. As opposed to Harry was like, do you know what? I'm so far away now. I need to catch up that distance and make sure yeah. I smash through that glass ceiling. And he didn't just smash it. He damn near put it into smithereens. So big yeah. up to Harry and his dad, Barry, I think it is. Hundred um, percent, and um, congratulations! They they got that extra year extension as well. So yeah, this is a, of him this current season. This is extra year extension, and we, obviously, hopefully, we'll be able to hear some news on on how all three of them are doing because I think they did they did brilliantly. Um, just very lastly, 
it was very interesting to hear that clubs have to let the Premier League know of their players that are being kept on from the age of just 10 years old. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Now it brings into to perspective the amount of pressure, not only the coaches around, but the kids. Mm. Because you actually have to give a name of all the kids you're keeping on from 10 years old. That is unreal. Yeah. I, do you know what? I was looking into that. I think that came in from the EPPP. Do you remember we were protesting about it when we were back in the championship? We were furious yeah. that the Premier League clubs could just swipe your best talent at the youngest of ages yeah. without compensation packages. So I think the compromise was reached that from under 10s up, or sorry, from 10 years old up, there has to be, right, you have to have a list of Joe and Joe and Jack Bloggs, you know, um, John and Dave Smith, blah, 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 blah. Because that then enables them to go, right, this player got released by Crystal Palace, but he's been picked up by, let's say, Fulham. Yeah? Because you got to remember, London football changes from, from every oh, yeah. angle. Yeah, like I remember going for trials at Fulham's um, academy when I was very young, and didn't make it. wasn't too be up about it. I knew I hadn't done it enough to be considered, so I wasn't. I was thinking, oh, that's annoying. But you know, there were kids there that were just way ahead of me. You have to be real. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't punk yourself like that. But you know, again, this documentary just opens up the areas of of that system that we're not privy to because as fans. All we get to see is the youngsters come through when they're making their debut in the League Cup or the FA Cup or the or bare minimum the Premier League. Like Wan Masaka, for example, made his Premier League debut at home to Tottenham, I believe. Mm. I was there for that game. I couldn't have told you what he was like before Beforehand, he yeah. broke through. I'd seen him in pre-season, but it wasn't a case of, oh, Wan Masaka's this amazing academy right back, da 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 Because we'd heard so many youngsters before that, like Saleh Kai Kai. Hiram Boateng, Levi Lumeka, uh, who else? Was, who else has come through? Uh, I'm trying to remember now. Oh, there's been some before, like um, Brandon Pierrick in that as well. Brandon Pierrick, Kyle De Silva, um, Reese Alassani. There's so many youngsters that we were hearing about on the way to where we are now that we were hoping they would come good and they would prove they would continue that good line of production we had. From Coca Cola, we had Johnny Williams, Wilf Zaha, Sean Scannell, Victor Moses, yeah. and go back even further to uh, Vince Hilaire, Kenny Sampson, John Salako, uh, bloody hell, I'm trying to remember Wayne Routledge, John Bostock, Wayne Routledge, uh, Routledge, <laughs> Bobby McEnough, Ben Watson. The amount of players we've seen come through Copa's Cup, we forget how many players we've had come through, you know, yeah, you know, even Gareth Southgate, much as I'm a bit funny about Southgate, but. <laughs> He came through our academy. Let's not try and front like he did. Yeah. We know he did. But the fact that we're seeing Cope as Cope and the work that goes in there in a totally different light, you're thinking, yo, I never realised how heartbreaking this is, but also how hot uplifting it is when things go to plan. When things go right, you're like, you know what, wicked. But when things go slightly wrong, like it did with Bola, because you're like, oh, no, Bola. I wanted him to, to, to stay with his mates. But obviously yeah. the club was saying, listen, Bola, we'll help you. But they couldn't guarantee him the same thing that his mates had got because his mates yeah. had done enough over the season. Bola was trying to do too much and hide in injuries and wasn't really switched on in games. But, you know, to see, to see that episode three for me really delivered on, right, you've got the great side of par uh, parent coaching and the not so great side of parent coaching. Yeah. But at the same time, you get to see how much the parents want it for their sons. It's not a case of they're trying, they're expecting their son to be Messi or Ronaldo or Neymar. They want it so bad because they know if they don't get it, the boy's going to be absolutely crushed. Mm. Because you, don't, you don't spend enough times in academies to not make it and be fine with it. You want to make it. If you're yeah. in there to like 16s and 17s, you want to be making it to the 18s and 21s. So mm. it's it's a bit mad. I'm not going to lie. But it's, it's, it's yeah. great that we're getting this, you know, behind the scenes yeah. look and stuff yeah. because bear in mind, it had, had this come out on Palace TV, we wouldn't we, we couldn't be able to do this the way we're doing it because not everybody else could watch it. You have to be yeah. have you have to have a Palace TV subscription to see this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. oh, listen, big up to all the families, you know. I mean, and, I'll, yeah. and as I said, Wes got painted a little bit dirty, to be fair, because he just wants the best for his son, Rob. Can't fault him for that. Yeah, there's ways to go about it, but 
He's not saying, oh, my son's my son, my son has to be the best, or I don't yeah, want to yeah. train him no more. He's just parents want it so bad because they want their sons to do well. And that's totally yeah. natural. Absolutely. Same if it was the girls. If girls want to become footballers, you want your daughters, Rich, you've got two girls. If if your girls want to be football, you'd want the best for them. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you might coach them a bit too intensely because you're their dad, but you can't help that. That's you wanting the best for your child. Even yeah. if it comes across as you're trying to undermine the coach's authority, you then realise, you know what, actually... Mm, I need, to, I need to pull that back. Pull back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You, got, you can understand... And, and Wes, Wes did that as well. So, like, we obviously got to make sure that that's highlighted. Wes did that. And I think the relationship between Wes and the coaches will just is going to bl blossom from from that incident, from that, that that period and stuff, which was great and stuff. I tell you what, though, before we close, obviously you know they do the snippets where it says next week we're talking about parents, boy. <laughs> next week, one looks mad. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that, guys. Um, now this has been. Wicked. I'm loving. I'm loving reviewing this documentary. I'm, it's so gripping. You know, and obviously, I know there's obviously probably fans out there in the states and stuff that that can't access it. So hopefully, this reveal gives these reviews give you a, give, an insight into the academy and stuff as well. You know um, what? I, do you know what on that? I think the club will release it after it's out on Channel Four. Yeah, I reckon so too. Yeah, because they'll know the global audience will want to see it because it's yeah. a bit. But obviously, because Channel Four isn't available outside of the UK and mm -hmm, Ireland, yeah. it's a lot harder to send it out there to other parts of the world. But they'll definitely put it up on the club's yeah. media channel. And you'll actually probably get all the episodes without the ad breaks because the Channel 4 ad breaks are so frustrating. You know what's nuts? Like, because obviously I had to... I was inside, so I couldn't watch it on, on Channel 4 TV. So I downloaded the... Um, on all four. The four app. All four. There's, yeah, there's only one advert. So you know when it's an ad break? Mm. Normally you have about five minutes of ads. Mm. There was one ad. Maybe I might have to wait till till ten o'clock and watch it there. <laughs> Just watch it in peace. <laughs> <laughs> nah, because I'm recording them so I can go back and watch them at another time, so that yeah. I can skip all the ads and then focus on it again. But watching it live, I just I like how engrossing it I've become. Yeah, because it's, it's even, my, even my dad's watching it. My dad doesn't even watch football, bro. So yeah. that's how you know it's something to watch because again, it's an insight to an area of football that isn't widely discussed because naturally it's young kids you don't want to put young kids under that kind of pressure but yeah the great thing is and rich i know you'll back me up on this because it's our club because we want the best for south london it's just so refreshing to see all the negative stereotypes about where we're from it's like don't get me wrong that's a very real side of south london but yeah. we're not animals you know yeah. and, the, and the, the negatives are always a worry like i'm always because you live in South London, my brother lives in South London, JC lives in South London. I'm always thinking, yo, I know that there's Donnies out there that move a bit mad in the head and they, yeah, yeah. they, they do madness. But to know that these young boys are given the chance to make their dreams come true if they work hard enough and they listen to the to the coaches. Because yeah. to see, like, um, what's that guy who used to play for Cheltenham and Ports? Uh, Todorov. The fact that oh, he's yeah. at our academy, you're like, Wow. Because you wouldn't associate former players from other clubs coming in, but their experience as professional players helps, helps nurture yeah. the next generation. So it's wonderful that we're not necessarily trying to be too in-house and hiring ex-players from our club. We want to bring yeah. people in from all the other aspects. So then you're like, Do you know what? That's a really great idea. And you can see that now with the way that um, the investment into the academy infrastructure went. Because even seeing it now, apart from the drone fly through, you're like, so this is what the Wambasaka money was spent on. Okay. I'm, I'm with it. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Guys, as always, smash the like button. Subscribe if you're new. Please drop your comments in the comment section as well, like your thoughts on the episode. Mm -hmm. And even if you want to go back and watch um, other reviews that we've done, drop your your comments in that comment section about the, the episode. It's great to hear your views on if you've enjoyed the episode, uh, if you've agreed or disagreed with anything your Nate have said and what your thoughts are. So, um, yeah, keep guys, keep interacting with us and stuff. And, um, yeah, looking forward to next week, week episode four. So until then, peace. peace.